a greeting from Stillwater, New York. Uh, this is Stillwater Reservoir. To really maximize a Jackery, you might want to consider some of these connectors. I have two Jackery solar panels, and it's an awful day for charging. It's totally overcast and rainy. And um, you can only hook one of these to the, uh, the 240, which I've got here, uh, because there's only one input, right? But when I hooked up these solar panels, it's so dark that they're 100 watt solar panels, but they're only putting out eight watts each. And uh, that of course would lengthen how long it takes me to charge this thing. So with this, I can put both panels together and I can get it to charge uh, at 16 watts. While that's not great, it's a lot better than eight watts. The inputs from two solar panels on this end, these are eight millimeter barrel connectors. And on this side, it has this Anderson type connector. Now, I want to use that on, say, this 500, but the 500 requires an 8 millimeter barrel connector. So what you need is one of these adapters. I'll have links to all these in the bottom. And um, it's 8 millimeter on this side for input to the Jackery. And then I can simply hook up these, uh, this connector and then I can plug in both solar panels. But you can hook up two solar, 200 watt solar panels safely. It'll still maybe only charge at 80 watts or whatever it is. But uh, this is good in a day like today. I can uh, maximize my charging with what I have. Trailer requires this connector. I think it's an SAE or SMA. I forget what they call this thing. Uh, but they're pretty common in automotive use and motorcycles and stuff for battery chargers and all. So the other end is a uh, Anderson connector. I can hook that to my, uh, to my Y connector and I can plug this into the trailer and I can have, uh, I can use these solar panels to charge my trailer also. Now, Jackery says these panels are not waterproof and I don't doubt it. Uh, whatever their reason is, they don't want you to use them out in the rain. And, uh, but unfortunately, I've been out here for uh, three days of uh, steady rain <laughs> and they continue to work just fine. They don't output much energy uh, in this dim light, but uh, the, uh, the other solar panels I have seem to be a little bit more efficient, but uh, they are continuing to function even though they're going through uh, rain here. So it's not recommended that you use them in the rain, but mine are still working. What I did was I, uh, I bought one of these connectors and it has alligator clips on the other end. So I can plug this into the input and then I can hook this to any other solar panel that I have, uh, just bare wire connections and, uh, and I can charge that way also. This is the Jackery 500 and uh, one of the things I really like about it is it has three DC outlets. Uh, there's one here and then there's two here. The other two require these, um, these adapters. They just slide right in. You just plug them in and uh, now you can have three devices. Um, you can also, if your Jackery is a smaller one and you don't have that, you can just get one of these Y splitters. Yeah, the total draw of your devices, or however many you have hooked up, can't exceed 10 amps. That's where it throttles, that's where it's, uh, that's the maximum. I think it'll shut down if you try and draw more than 10 amps out of it. But if you have some small devices and you want to charge them with this, this is a really nice setup. And you could have up to... So with this setup, um, one here, one output here, and two more output here, I could charge up to four 12 volt devices. But again, I just cannot exceed the maximum amperage that this is able to output. On the output side also, I got one of these. It has the, uh, these are goal zero ones. I'll have links to all this again. Uh, this is, I think these are either four or six millimeter, the outputs, and you can plug this into one of these uh, outputs and you'll have two alligator clips you can hook to anything. It's a pretty handy device. It's expensive, it's $20, but um, it plugs into any uh, 12 volt outlet or car outlet and you can put in bare wires and you can uh, tighten this down. It will also accept uh, probes. I think they call these bayonet probes. Uh, you know, I use them on meters and stuff and uh, you can plug these in here, which is a nice way to connect and you can uh, uh, have two alligator outputs um, and you know, uh, just plug this guy in here and you're all good to go.
if you're the kind of person who likes to experiment or wants to hook a lot of things together, uh, these are good investments. And uh, these connectors are certainly not cheap. They add up. Uh, but you know, if you want maximum capability out of, your, uh, out of your device, this is a good way to go. So over here I have this little uh, 240 jackery is charging two camera batteries and, uh, and an Enel a Panasonic Eneloop battery charger. Uh, very good charger. Um, it, uh, it runs on USB. You need about an amp. I've run it uh, off these large solar panels. I couldn't get it to work off of small solar panels, but it, uh, it runs pretty good. This one truly does charge and drain, right? It's a battery charger. What am I talking about draining? Well, this one, it truly does charge up these uh, Eneloops uh, individually, and it, uh, it does a very good job on them. Um, but it can also be used as a, uh, a USB power brick. <laughs> you can plug a, uh, a USB cable in here and press a button and this will output uh, USB uh, power. You know, the, the four double A's will power another device. So I thought, well, what the hell, let me try this. It's a good charger. And uh, what it, it only charged my phone, my Android phone. It only charged it like 30% uh, or 40%. Uh, it's not a full charge, but I guess in a pinch it's a good thing to have and why not? I need a battery charger here So it's uh, It's worked out pretty good um, What I did notice though um, if you're really into batteries When you have like four batteries in a radio or a flashlight or something if you test those batteries You'll find that they're not always evenly matched and I always find that one battery is drained But maybe the other three are okay or two batteries are down and the other two are okay this thing, when I used it as a power source, it drained all batteries equally. It knew what it was doing. There's a smart chip in here, and they, they mentioned this in the literature, that it charges and drains all batteries equally, which uh, maximizes your power output, which is a nice feature. So I'm totally on rechargeables. You know, I don't want to be... <laughs> if, uh, if the zombie apocalypse comes, I don't want to be going to look for batteries. I've got all my batteries with me and I can recharge them. Really not gonna be able to troubleshoot anything without a meter. Now, this is a very inexpensive meter. Uh, they're all over Amazon. What I look for in a meter is it has to be able to read 12 volts uh, DC power. I have to be able to read voltage. That's how I found the bad wire this morning on one of my solar panels. And if you wanna know how well your solar panels are working, well, then you need DC amperage. And uh, you need to be able to, you need to know how to measure that. Uh, measuring amps when you look for a meter. I would look for one that could measure 12 volt AC, you know voltage uh, 12 DC and AC voltage and I would look for one that could accept up to 10 amps You really need that in a trailer scenario like I've got you need to be able to measure some heavier amperage and uh, with these solar panels and with uh, a lot of the stuff I'm using out here. This is a good thing to have uh, and I would say get a meter that can measure 10 amps. A lot of meters don't go up to 10 amps, but look for one that does. And learn how to use it, play with it at home. Uh, you can't troubleshoot out here without this thing.